Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This report is trading on April the 11th, 2016, Monday. This is an intraday chart of the U.S. dollar index. As we indicated in the last video, I did inform you that we're into the Kumo cloud and that the momentum was shifting downward to a downward, forming a downward trend channel here and testing the bottom half of this of uh, this cloud here. A breakout below this cloud would set the pace for hitting the 92 handle, even possibly getting into the high 91 price range. So for this week, that's exactly what I will be watching with tight stops, of course, trailing it as it heads down. Moving right along now to the gold market. Gold has broken out and is pulse waving but we are a little cautious because if you recall from a few videos ago 1263 was the uh, the weekly pulse wave and the market touched it and failed so I'm not sure if it's gonna get enough upward thrush to push beyond it or not Likewise, silver seems to be having a problem with $16. So if we can get there, then I will reevaluate positions at that time. But as of right now, I'm watching to see what it's going to do. Here's the gold now trying to break out here. All right. Hitting resistance, hitting that overbought red part. It's going to need to get a close here of 12.89.7. It's going to need to close above there, close at or above 12.89.7 this week to really, really, really lock in strong bullish momentum. Got to do it. If it fails, then that's going to show the signs of another failed rally which could beat prices back down severely below 1190 so that's what we're going to be watching this week don't want to see prices hit that 1193 if it does hit 1190.3 then the market is in trouble and we need to close above 1289.7 in order to, sh to prove that this market is really really hot and really about to break out to the upside and not just head fake again uh, same thing with silver we don't need another head fake we need to see if the market is either going to be bullish or bearish alright it's been struggling it's been lagging the gold market but now it's starting to look like gold a little bit isn't it that prior chart the only difference is it's not outside the Kumo cloud of death and you remember the Kumo cloud rule says that anything goes inside the cloud that means price action cannot um, cannot be what's the word I'm looking for you can't really count on what you're seeing in, in the cloud no matter how bullish or bearish things look they can turn on a dime alright so there's no guarantee in the Kumo cloud of death um, only thing you're promised is, is a head fake and churning so I'm setting this one out too I want to see if we can break outside of this Kumo cloud Silver is going to need to close above the cloud this week in order to really show that it's it's bullish. In order to track buyers, that's what we're going to need. So it's going to need to close above this 1624 level. It's really going to have to do that. And it's, it shouldn't be difficult being that it's been lagging gold. So we're going to have to watch these moves here for more clues. But you don't want to see prices at that 1454. If prices break that 1454, then it's all down from here, taking out the prior 1350 low. All right, now looking at the oil market here. All right, oil has managed to stay in between the two trend lines here. Okay, and right now it's not really going any higher. It's not really going any lower. It's just trading within this sideways channel. All right, S support right now is at 
on the downside and resistance right now for the week is 4457 so if it's going to get legs it's going to have to break above here and close above this and hopefully make the 4457 its its support its new support it's going to need that if it's going to head up to 60 if that does not happen then we're looking at going back into the 20s on the crude oil so crude oil has a lot to do too um, this is just a retracement move off the lows nothing more a uh, new trend is not emerged this is just profit taking uh, I don't really see bulls really piling on per se if they did you see much longer extended bars here instead you're seeing these little teeny bars so that's not a lot it needs to make up its mind what it wants to do as well all right take a look now at the Russell because the Russell's been kind of like leading per se leading and lagging at times like right now this looks like the crude oil a little bit this channel seems to be getting a little toppy a little heavy uh, right now the Russell is in jeopardy of trading below uh, this trend line support this weekly support for the Russell's at 1078.3 upside resistance is at 1126 1120.6 and then you have air there between this trend line resistance and the bottom of the Kumo cloud at 1159. So there's a lot of work to be done in this. But right now it's showing a downtrend channel. And it could break down at any time, at any moment. Uh, we need to see if all rallies are going to be sold here. Likewise with the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones is signaling the same thing. Okay, as you can see, the Dow is pretty similar. It's above the Kumo cloud here, but it's already at the top of the range. So this week will be critical to see if this market can actually close above the 17825 price level. And really, to be honest with you, this is sort of like silver because of the way it's been moving this market's going to really need to close above the 1905 it really is in order to prove that the downward correction is over and that the market wants to literally be bullish again all right so technically speaking we're above the kumo cloud we're above both uh both of the uh the moving average trend lines but one caveat is that this um the, this purple line here is not crossed above the orange one yet. It needs to be above it in order to, to, to lock in a new upward phase and get momentum behind it. Last time it failed here. Just long sideways expanding trading range only to collapse. So we could see that happen here again. But if this one fails this time, the 16.129 uh, weekly support will definitely uh, be taken out. And this market could fall hard back down into the 15 fives with no problem. And it can do it in lightning fast speed. So we need to keep an eye on it and see what happens here. Uh, the NASDAQ is doing whatever it wants to do. So this one is a little bit different. Um, it's kind of a mix <laughs> between the Russell and the Dow right now. The way it's acting, the way it's behaving. Uh, it's stalling out right here. All right, so 4560 seems to be a ceiling for it. It's going to need to close above that in order to prove that the bulls have taken advantage of this market. Downward uh, pressure is at 4019 and a quarter. Don't want to see prices get down there. If they do, then this thing could break and break hard back down to 38. All right, so that's pretty much it uh, for right now. Just remember, uh, take what you can. And give nothing back. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This Vulcan Report is for trading on Monday, April the 11th, 2016. Just wanted to briefly go over the spreadsheet that I use for my weekly trading. Uh, normally, I don't necessarily always have time to do a video, but I do update the blog with the uh, price triggers. The way to read this is like such. You have multiple columns here. The columns that you want to be 
familiar with is the columns that have the first pulse wave resistance, the momentum reading, and of course the stop loss and the uptrend. Just so you can get an idea of what it is that I'm doing. Okay? So, for instance, the US dollar index. All right, for Monday trading or Sunday night into Monday trading, looking to get short at 93.97 with a buy stop at 94.55. Likewise, looking to get long at 94.55 with a sell stop at 93.97. Notice that the market has an 88 reading under the trend column. That means the market is trading within the Kumo cloud and we're looking to hop in it waiting for it to, to pick a direction. Another thing to note is under the momentum column here, this is negative momentum here, positive momentum here. All right, when you have a reading of a one, that means that the market's locked in. It's either locked into a downtrend or an uptrend. And this one here, it's locked in to a downtrend channel. All right, a reading of 88 means that the market is neutral and or in the, in the Kumo cloud. All right, so you always enter the market under the first pulse wave resistance, that's your buy trigger, or you sell at the first pulse wave support, that's your sell trigger. All right, moving on along now, I want to show you some of our red alert signals. A, uh, an alert of 9-11, that's a red alert warning of a possible crash if you see this 9-11 under the negative momentum column. If it were to occur under the positive momentum column, that's a 9-11 warning of a market rally. It's a rally alert. So when it's on this side, it's a crash alert. On this side, it's a rally alert. And again, readings of 1 indicate locked in momentum or strength. So for instance, on the dollar, we have strength to the downside because you have a positive 1 there. So notice that there is a 9-11 warning for this week on the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, Russell 2000, Dow Jones, and soybeans. It does not necessarily mean that the mark, these markets will crash or have significant pullbacks. It just means that the likelihood of it is high. The reason being is because the algos search out uh, ir irregular, irregular price things, irregularities in the uh, the put call ratios and bid ass things like that, and take into account any kind of negative bot checks coming back in the market. So that's what I look at there. So you're not going to necessarily pick that up with um, traditional technical indicators or or chart reading. This searches and picks out things that you're not going to be able to tell with the naked eye. All right? So that's what the 911 is. If it was to say 411 or 411, that's just giving you information to pause and consider. So 911 though means that it's a very high likelihood of taking place. 411 just means that um, there's some there's something going on behind the scenes that you want to be aware of that means that the market could or, or may pull back. If it's over here, a 411 would mean that the market may break out. That's what that means. 911s, though, are, I take extremely serious. I would say 9 out of 10 times, they hit. So, being that this is coming up for this week and it's Monday, I would have to take serious consideration of these. All right. Now, lately, especially last week, the stock indexes were whipping around like crazy. So you would get triggered on both the long and the short side and stopped out on both. The way to play it is you have to take whatever profit you can and follow it when the markets get like that and just take it from there. The stops normally will, they've been designed to ebb and flow with the market. So when volatility is high, the stops get a little wider. When volatility is low, the stops will get narrow. That's how that works. So you have to pick and choose your trades wisely 
based on you know your size of account and your tolerance for risk if you find a risk to reward that's a little bit better for you then you take those trades understand unless you have you know a million dollar account or what have you you're not gonna be able to take every trade signal so you just pick the ones that you know you think are gonna move like for me for instance I always know I'm gonna get some kind of movement in the stock indexes the dollar traditionally has been you know a pretty tame market a little bit easier to trade because it's not as wild but lately the um, the bars have been pretty pretty long so it just depends but the dollar is usually a, a safe one to trade um, you can also manage a little bit better the gold and the silver those are pretty good uh, as far as movement also the euro will will do you right and lately the soybeans which which um, historically moves like the S&P 500 uh, it has uh, periods of dormant and quietness too and you won't get it get as hurt except for when crop reports are about to come out then that's when you want to be flat alright so once again the dollar the euro gold silver and soybeans is a little bit um, you know a little bit more tame market movement so you can you can manage those with no problem there are also uh, these e-mini e micro contracts you can trade too so you can do those also the stock indexes don't have that the e-mini is as small as you're going to get okay so moving along here uh... let's see reading a fifty two in a trend column means that uh... the market is either bullish or bearish meaning uptrend or long-term downtrend so for example here you see in the crude oil the market's in a long-term downtrend because you have a 52 reading however on the uptrend column um, you have an 18 that means that the market is in a corrective mode from its bear its overall bear market so it's correcting now it's been down for so long it's starting to correct and move a little different now so that's all that means and then here on the NASDAQ it's not in a locked in bull or bear market as far as long term downtrend the long term downtrend right now is pretty much flat but it's showing you that it has um, some upward bias to it because your positive momentum is locked in alright so it's kind of making up its mind trying to make up its mind what it wants to do uh, similar would be the gold market alright the gold market is trying to get bullish you're partially bullish. When you have an 18 reading here, you know it's 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 sli it's slightly bullish. Okay. When you have a 70 reading, that's when the long-term trend is locked in and trending. So in this case, in the feeder cattle, we have a 70 reading, which means the market is in a locked-in long-term bear market. Okay. And when you add a one over here, that means the momentum is locked in and the market is just falling like a rock. In this case, the overall trend is still locked in bear market, trending downward, but the momentum has come off and now switched to the positive side, meaning that people are taking some profit here. All right, and if uh, bulls start piling on, this zero reading in the uptrend will turn to an 18, meaning that you have a bullish channel developing, and you don't know how far it's going to retrace, but sometimes markets do a sharp recovery and then the 18 becomes a 52 so you have to uh, look and see for that so that's the one to just show let's make a quick video showing how how I read the markets and what I use to determine my trades and things of that nature so that's all I have for now just remember to uh, be encouraged and remember bulls make money bears make money but pigs get slaughtered so take what you can give nothing back